hands on math. Hello, let's discuss some of the relationships that exist among trigonometric functions. Trigonometric functions relate for an acute angle, they relate that angle to ratios of the side lengths of a right triangle that has that angle as, as one of its acute angles. Based on the position of the angle, often called theta, we can describe one of the sides as being opposite theta, another th the side is adjacent to theta, and the largest side of a right triangle is always called the hypotenuse. From that description of the three sides, we define the three basic trigonometric functions to be sine of theta, cosine of theta, and tangent of theta. The sine ratio is the opposite side over the hypotenuse, cosine is the adjacent side over the hypotenuse, and tangent is the opposite side over the adjacent side. From these three initial trigonometric ratios, we can describe three reciprocal ratios. Cosecant of theta is defined to be the reciprocal of sine of theta. So that gives us the hypotenuse over the opposite side. Secant of theta is defined to be the reciprocal of cosine, which is the hypotenuse over the adjacent side. And cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent, which is the adjacent side over the opposite side. To remember the six ratios that we have here, well, to remember the, the three kind of more basic ratios, uh, the mnemonic that you may have heard before, the, the, a mnemonic that's used uh, is so katoa which is kind of an easy word to remember if you if you think about it long enough i guess uh, and it the letters tell us that you know sine is the opposite over hypotenuse cosine is the adjacent over hypotenuse and tangent is the opposite over the adjacent side uh, so that word can help kind of summarize uh, those three uh, more basic trigonometric ra uh, ratios. The reciprocals, you kind of need to memorize and, and sort of put those together. Uh, remember which goes with which. Uh, you can, if, you, if it helps, you could think of the word cho sha tau. I don't know if that's something people use or not, but uh, you know, it's there. Uh, where cosecant is the hypotenuse over opposite, secant is the hypotenuse over the adjacent side, and tangent is the adjacent over the opposite side. Um, we can think of these reciprocals, of course, in the other way uh, as well. So I can think of, just to write this down, uh, I can think of sine of theta as the reciprocal of cosecant. I can think of cosine of theta as the reciprocal of secant, and I can think of tangent as the reciprocal of cotangent. So the reciprocal relationship goes uh, in both directions. Beyond just the reciprocal relationships, it's true that you know, given any one trigonometric ratio, we can find the others. In, you know, in fact, all six trigonometric ratios are related by the right triangle uh, that kind of defines them. Um, so, suppose we know that cosecant of some angle beta equals 3.7. We can use that fact to find any of the other trigonometric ratios for that angle beta. Uh, so, let's just look at a few of those. Uh, suppose we want to find sine of beta uh, and tangent of beta. Finding sine of beta is pretty straightforward, right? because sine is the reciprocal of cosecant. We can simply use the fact that cosecant equals 3.7 to 
to get a value for sine. Uh, it would be 1 over 3.7, or if we want to write that as a sort of nicer fraction, it would be 10 over 37. Um, or we may want to find a decimal value for that. And so we could take 10 divided by 37, or 1 divided by 3.7, uh, and see that it's approximately 0.27. So something that's important, maybe useful to, to mention, um, this decimal va value, uh, 0 0.2703, uh, is an approximate answer, whereas I guess both of these, but especially the fraction, would be an exact uh, answer, the, the more proper you know, fraction with whole numbers. To find tangent of beta, we can use the information that's given uh, about cosecant uh, to build a triangle for some angle beta that has that that has that cosecant value. So if I choose one of my angles to be beta, cosecant of beta is 3.7. Well, that means that cosecant of beta, I can think of that as a fraction, 3.7 over 1, um, or uh, I could think of it as 37 over 10. Uh, and that gives me side lengths for the triangle. Well, cosecant, specifically cosecant, is the hypotenuse over the opposite side. And so the hypotenuse would be 37, and the opposite side would be 10. Using the Pythagorean theorem, we can figure out what that third side should be. So let's do that. So 37 isn't the most friendly number, so let's uh, figure out what 37 squared is. Uh, and that's a little hard to see, but we end up with 1,369. So the Pythagorean theorem says that c squared equals a squared plus b squared. Uh, and in this case, that means 37 squared equals 10 squared plus the unknown value squared. So we just saw that's 1369. 10 squared, of course, is 100. Uh, maybe I'll call this x for the unknown value. Um, and so that unknown value, well, if I subtract 100 from both sides, we get that x squared equals 1269, or x equals the square root of 1269. So not the nicest number in the world, or you know, simplest number to think about, but this unknown side is the square root of 1269, which means that tangent for uh, beta, we want to take the opposite side uh, and then divide by the adjacent side. Uh, tangent is opposite over adjacent, and tangent of beta equals 10 over the square root of 1269. Often in mathematics, it's, it's kind of scare quotes here, uh, nicer, it's hard to do square quotes with a pen in your hand, it's nicer to have a whole number in the denominator rather than a square root. And, and there are some reasons for getting rid of square roots uh, in the denominator. We, we can multiply a fraction, a ratio, uh, up top and, and in the denominator by the same thing. So if I multiply the numerator and the denominator by 1269, the square root of 1269, these square roots combine to just give us 1269, and up top we would get 10 times the square root of 1269. Um, and so either of these would be exact answers. Uh, the the 10 times the square root of 1269 over 1269 uh, would be um, a rationalized, we would say a rationalized denominator, which, which is kind of a nice uh, feature. Uh, we could, of course, with either of those, um, we could find a decimal value. So if I take 10 divided by the square root of 1269, I get a decimal value for tangent of beta of 
0.1-ish, 0 0.2807. Since this video is getting a little long, we'll take a look at co-functions in the next video.